After that, after uh, zero Kelvin, as long as you have some kinetic energy, you have entropy. All right? And so it just depends on what temperature you have, uh, the sample has. Uh, and so it turns out you can go in the lab, uh, measure the entropy uh, for different substances. Uh, we will primarily want to not know the absolute entropy of a given molecule or ion or atom or whatever, but what, rather we're interested in the change in entropy. Okay. Um, and so we can just look up those values for entropy and calculate the change in entropy, delta S, for our given reaction. And delta S, like delta H, even delta G, delta T is just going to be final minus initial, right? The entropy of your products minus the entropy of your reactants. So very similar reaction to our equation to our delta H that we use for chemical reactions. All right. So the uh, delta S reaction, change in entropy for the reaction. Again, we have to specify temperature. Entropy is temperature dependent. And so we will go with um, standard states, 25 degrees Celsius, 298 Kelvin, would be the sum of the entropy of our products and it's um, stoichiometric dependent. If you have one mole of something, you have so much entropy. If you have two moles of something, you have twice as much entropy. Minus the sum, minus the sum of the entropy of the reactants. Of course, times their coefficients. So, of course, that means sum, the Greek letter sigma, sum, and meant the coefficients. Now, of course, for this calculation, we just would look up the values, calculate it, uh, pretty straightforward. But when you're looking at the individual molar entropies of a given substance, you'll notice that you, some have higher entropies than others. And we could uh, identify some of those. Okay, These are, of course, uh, categorized by their phase. And who has the highest entropy, gases, liquids, or solids? Gases, gases on average, gases. Then liquids, and then the lowest entropies would be the solids. So we already knew that. Okay. So entropy goes up as you go from solid to liquid to gas. <coughs> All right. But then within a given um, phase, what differentiates the entropy of a given substance? So sodiums Entropy is 51.3 joules per mole Kelvin. Sodium chloride is 72.1. Why would sodium chloride have a higher entropy than sodium? It's bonded to something? Okay. The, chlor the chloride? Yeah, it's just, basically there's more stuff. Okay. Sodium's one thing. Sodium chloride is two things. Okay. How many ways can I disorder one thing? A lot. How many ways can I disorder two things? A lot more. And so as you get more atoms in a given compound, the entropy goes up. The fancy term for that is molecular complexity. As the, com as the molecules gets more complex, the entropy increases. I just think about it as the more the, as uh, entropy increases as the number of elements increase. If elements. Oh. All right, and then what about one element? What about sodium for versus potassium? Why would potassium have a higher uh, entropy than sodium? It's larger. So what's that mean? It's further down. It's further down up here. What is it? Yeah, it has, more protons. has more protons, neutrons, and electrons. electrons. So even within the atom, it has more stuff to get disordered. So yeah. So the number of electrons. Uh, basically, we just boil it down to the number of electrons because you know they're in the orbitals. 
uh, also increase molar entropy. And that's why you'll see things like, um, like argon versus hydrogen. You might think hydrogen, well that's two atoms. Why wouldn't that be higher entropy than argon? Well, hydrogen only has two electrons, the molecule, each one of it. Argon has 18 electrons, so it's a lot more complex in that regard. So what I usually say, entropy also goes up as number of electrons goes up. And of course, you have to compare apples to apples. Like you see, iron chloride, iron three chloride down at the bottom is, has a higher entropy than a gas like hydrogen or argon because, you know, there's iron and four chlorines. That's a lot of electrons, even though it's solid. All right. But we can use these uh, molar entropies to calculate the entropy change for a reaction. All right. So let's do this one. Let's calculate the uh, entropy change for the balanced chemical equation for NH3, that's ammonia plus oxygen, goes to 4NO and 6H2O. So what's our equation going to look like? It's going to look like delta S, the reaction, equals some of the products. So 4 times the entropy. of NO plus six times the entropy of water products minus reactants, right? Minus four times the entropy of ammonia plus five times the entropy of oxygen. All right, so let's throw in these numbers. Delta S, the reaction, equals four times the entropy for nitrogen monoxide, 210.8 joules per mole Kelvin, plus six times waters, 188.8, joules per mole Kelvin minus the reactants, which starts off with four times ammonia's 192.8 joule per mole Kelvin plus five times oxygen, 205.8 2 joules per mole Kelvin. Okay, so what do we get for our entropy change? 178.8, is that positive or negative? Positive, okay. What are my units? Actually, it's just gonna be joules per Kelvin. These coefficients, although I don't really write it, nobody really does, you're multiplying four moles. So that's four moles. So the moles cancel out, giving you four. If you wrote down joules per mole Kelvin, I wouldn't um, be mad at you. How could I be mad at you guys? Um, but no, it's not that big a deal. What does that mean? What does positive 178.8 joules per Kelvin mean? We don't know anything about spontaneity. That's delta G. What's delta S tells us? Entropy. What happened? It increased. Entropy increased. What does that mean? Becoming more disordered. So entropy increases becoming more disordered. Could we have looked at this equation and predicted that? Yes. Yes, why could we, how could we have predicted that? Yeah, so it's all gases and it's going from nine to 10. So yeah, probably gonna go up and yep, it did. If we got 179, that would be fine? That would be fine, just you though, no one else. <laughs> no, yeah, so 179.0. So we're gonna keep one decimal, usually 